High above the city, on a tall column, stood the statue of the happy prince. He was gilded all over with thin leaves of fine gold, for eyes he had two bright sapphires. He was very much admired indeed. Why can't you be like the happy prince? asked a sensible mother of her little boy who was crying for the moon. The happy prince never dreams of crying for anything. I am glad there is someone in the world who is quite happy, muttered a disappointed man as he gazed at the wonderful statue. One night there flew over the city a little swallow. Her friends had gone away to Egypt six weeks before. But she had stayed behind, for she was in love with the countryside. All day long she flew, and at the night time she arrived at the city. Where shall I sleep? She said. Then she saw the statue on the tall column. I shall sleep there, she cried. So she landed just between the feet of the happy prince. It's a fine position with plenty of fresh air. I have a golden bedroom. She said softly to herself as she looked round, and she prepared to go to sleep. But just as she was putting her head under her wing, a large drop of water fell on her. What a curious thing! There is not a single cloud in the sky, and the stars are quite clear and bright, and yet it is raining. Then another drop fell. What is the use of a statue if it cannot keep the rain off? I must go look for a good chimney pot. And she decided to fly away. But before she opened her wings, a third drop fell, and she looked up. The eyes of the happy prince were filled with tears, and tears were running down his golden cheeks. His face was so sad in the moonlight that the little swallow was filled with pity. Who are you? I am the happy prince. Why are you weeping then? You've quite drenched me. When I was alive and had a human heart, I did not know what tears were, for I lived in the palace where sorrow was not allowed to enter. In the daytime, I played with my companions in the garden, and in the evening, I led the dance in the great hall. My courtiers called me the Happy Prince, and happy indeed I was, if pleasure be happiness. So I lived, and so I died. And now that I am dead, they have sent me up here so high I can see all the ugliness and all the misery of my city. And though my heart is made of lead, it makes me weep. Far away in a little street, there is a poorhouse. One of the windows is open, and through it I can see a woman seated at a table. Her face is thin and worn, and she has coarse red hands, all pricked by the needle, for she is a seamstress. In a bed in the corner of her room, her little boy is lying ill. He has a fever and is asking for oranges. His mother has nothing to give him but river water, so he is crying. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, my eyes are all that I have. They are made of rare sapphires. Pluck out one of them and take it to them. Dear Prince, I cannot do that. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, do as I command you. So the swallow plucked out the prince's eye and flew away with it in her beak over the roofs of the town. At last she came to the poorhouse and looked in. The boy was tossing feverishly on his bed and the mother had fallen asleep. She was so tired. In she hopped and laid the sapphire on the table beside the woman. Then she flew gently round the bed, fanning the boy's forehead with her wings. How cool I feel. I must be getting better. And he sank into a delicious slumber. Then the swallow flew back to the happy prince and told him what she had done. It's curious, but I feel quite warm now, although it is cold. That is because you have done a good action, said the prince. And the little swallow began to think, and then she fell asleep, thinking always made her sleepy. When day broke, she flew down to the river and had a bath. Tonight I go to Egypt said the swallow, and she was in high spirits at the prospect. When the moon rose, she flew back to the happy prince. I am leaving for Egypt. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, will you not stay with me one night longer? It is winter soon, and the chill snow will be here. In Egypt the sun is warm and the green palm trees, and the crocodiles lie in the mud and look lazy about them. 
Dear Prince, I must leave you, but I'll never forget you. In the square below, there stands a little match girl. She has let her matches fall in the gutter, and they are all spoiled. Her father will be angry with her if she does not bring home some money, and she is crying. She has no shoes or stockings, and her little head is bare. Pluck out my other eye and give it to her. I shall stay one night longer, but you cannot pluck out your eye. You'll be quite blind then. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, do as I command you. So she plucked out the prince's other eye and darted down with it. She swooped past the match girl and slipped the jewel into the palm of her hand. What a lovely piece of glass! cried the little girl, and she ran home laughing. <laughs> Then the swallow came back to the prince. You are blind now, so I'll stay with you always. No, little swallow, you must go away to Egypt. I will stay with you always, said the swallow, and she slept at the prince's feet. All the next day she sat on the prince's shoulder and told him stories of what she had seen in strange lands. Dear little swallow, you tell me of marvellous things, but fly over my city, little swallow, and tell me what you see there. So the swallow flew over the great city and saw the rich making merry in their beautiful houses while the beggars were sitting at the gates. Under the archway of a bridge, two little boys were lying in one another's arms to try and keep themselves warm. How hungry we are, they said. Then she flew back and told the prince what she had seen. I am covered with fine gold. You must take it off, leaf by leaf, and give it to my poor. Leaf after leaf of fine gold, the swallow picked off till the happy prince looked quite dull and grey. Leaf after leaf of fine gold she brought to the poor. The children's faces grew rosier. They laughed and played games in the street. We have bread now, they cried. Then the snow came and after the snow came the frost. The poor little swallow grew colder and colder, but she would not leave the prince. She loved him too well. She picked up crumbs outside the baker's door when the baker was not looking and tried to keep herself warm by flapping her wings. But at last she knew she was going to die. She had just strength to fly up to the prince's shoulder once more. Goodbye, dear prince. Will you let me kiss your hand? I am glad that you are going to Egypt at last, little swallow. You have stayed too long here. It is not to Egypt I am going. I am going to the house of death. Death is a brother of sleep, is it not? And she kissed the happy prince and fell down dead at his feet. At that moment, a curious crack sounded inside the statue, as if something had broken. The fact is that the leaden heart had snapped right in two. It certainly was a dreadfully cold frost. Early the next morning, the mayor was walking in the square below with the town councillors. As they passed the column, he looked up at the statue. Dear me, how shabby the happy prince looks. How shabby indeed, cried the town councillors, who always agreed with the mayor, and they went up to look at it. His eyes are gone and he's no longer golden, said the mayor. In fact, he's little better than a beggar. Little, little better than a beggar, said the town councillors. So they pulled down the statue of the happy prince. <laughs> then they melted the statue in a furnace. What a strange thing. This broken lead heart will not melt in the furnace. We must throw it away, said the workmen at the foundry. So they threw it on a rubbish heap where the dead swallow was also lying. Bring me the two most precious things in the city, said God to one of his angels. And the angel brought him the leaden heart and the dead bird. You have rightly chosen, for in my garden of paradise this little bird shall sing forevermore. And in my city of gold, the happy prince shall praise me. <laughs>